In the shadowy depths of medieval dungeons, where flickering torches cast long, eerie shadows on cold stone walls, there existed a device so feared, so dreaded, that its very name could silence the bravest of men, the rack. This unassuming structure of wood and iron was not just the tool of torture. It was a harbinger of agony, a relentless machine that turned the human body into a battlefield of suffering. The history of the rack begins in a time when power was enforced through pain, and the cries of the condemned were swallowed by the darkness of tyranny. Though its roots stretch back to antiquity, the rack found its true, horrifying purpose in the medieval period, particularly during the Inquisition, when it became the crown jewel of torture devices. It was here that the rack evolved into a symbol of absolute authority, where the state and church wielded it with merciless precision to extract confessions, enforce obedience, and break the will of those who dared defy their rule. The design was deceptively simple, a large, rectangular frame built of thick, unforgiving wood with rollers at each end. The victim, often stripped and terrified, was bound by their wrists and ankles to these rollers, their body stretched taut across the frame like an offering to some cruel deity. The executioner, clad in the mantle of power, would begin to turn the crank, each rotation pulling the victim's body tighter, stretching it further, until every muscle screamed and every joint threatened to give way. It was not the initial pain that made the rack so diabolical, but the slow, methodical escalation of torture. With each turn of the crank, the tension grew, first elongating the body, then tearing at the very fabric of its structure. The shoulders would dislocate first, followed by the hips, elbows, and knees, each joint popping and cracking with sickening finality. Ligaments stretched beyond their limits would snap, muscles would tear, and bones would creak under the strain. The victim's body became a symphony of suffering, each click of the ratchet another note in this dreadful composition. The true horror of the rack lay not only in its physical torment, but in the psychological devastation it wrought. The victim was fully conscious, fully aware of the slow destruction of their body. They knew there was no escape, no mercy only the relentless advance of pain. The rack was not just about punishment, it was about domination. It was a cruel reminder of the power held by those in authority, a display of their ability to inflict unimaginable pain on those who opposed them. And yet, within this theater of horror, there were stories of defiance. Some victims, despite the agony, refused to break, their silence a final act of resistance against their oppressors. But for most, the rack was a journey into madness, where the boundaries of human endurance were tested and shattered. As history marched on and the Enlightenment dawned, the rack slowly fell out of favor, its cruelty deemed too barbaric even for the most hardened rulers. By the 18th century, it had become a relic, a dark reminder of a time when justice was a twisted mirror reflecting the darkest aspects of human nature. But the legacy of the rack endures. It stands as a grim monument to an age when power was enforced through terror, and the human body was seen as something to be dominated, broken, and discarded. The history of the rack is not just the history of a tortured device. It is the history of human cruelty a haunting echo of the pain that once filled the air in those dark forgotten chambers. And though the rack may be silent now, the memory of its victims, and the suffering they endured, will never fade from the annals of history.